This video demonstrates the design procedure of a cantilever reinforced RCC beam as per IS 456-2000 code provisions. Watch this video till the end to know the requirement of steel at the bottom face of the cantilever beam which often ignored during problem solving. In this video, we will learn the design of cantilever beam which is monolithic with RCC column of size 300 mm by 450 mm for the following data. Clear span is 2.5 meter. The live load acting on the beam is 20 kN per meter. The grade of concrete is M20 and the grade of steel is Fe415 HYSD bars. Let us start by getting the values of FCK and FY. As per table 2 of IS456-2000, the value of FCK for M20 grade concrete is 20 newton per mm square. The value of FY for Fe415 steel is 415 newton per mm square as per SP34 1987 table 1.1. Let us start with step 1 by deciding the initial cross sectional dimension of the beam. The initial effective depth of the beam can be assumed based on vertical deflection criteria by referring clause 23.2.1 of IS456. This clause gives the maximum values of span to effective depth ratios. These ratios result in the minimum effective depth for different span length and support condition. Here, let us assume the value of span to depth ratio as 7. Putting the value of span as 2.5 meter in the ratio, we get the initial effective depth as 357 mm. Assume Nominal clear cover by referring to table 16 of IS456 for moderate exposure as 30 mm and bar diameter as 20 mm. Calculate the effective cover by adding the clear cover and half the bar diameter. Thus, we get the effective cover as 40 mm. Now, compute the total depth of the beam by adding an effective cover to the effective depth which comes to 397 mm. Round up the total depth to higher side equal to 450 mm. Recalculate the final effective depth by subtracting the effective cover from the total depth which comes to 410 mm. Assume the total width of the beam equal to column width as 300 mm. In step 2, let us calculate the effective span of the beam. As per clause 22.2 of IS456, the effective span of a cantilever beam is equal to the length of beam to the face of a support plus half the effective depth. After putting all the values, we get the effective span equal to 2.705 meter. In step 3, let us calculate the loads acting on the beam. First, calculate the self weight or a dead load of a beam by multiplying the cross sectional area of a beam with concrete density. Consider the concrete density as 25 kN per meter cube by referring to IS456 clause 19.2.1. After putting the values of concrete density, width, and depth of beam, we get dead load of a beam as 3.375 kN per meter, while the live load or the imposed load on the beam is given as 20 kN per meter. After getting dead load and imposed load, compute the total design or factored load per unit length using a load combination of dead load plus imposed load with a partial safety factor of 1.5 as given in table 18 of IS456. Thus, the total design or factored load per unit length equals to 1.5 dead load plus 1.5 imposed load. This is equal to 35.10 kN per meter. This way, we get the analytical model of cantilever beam as shown in figure 1 to calculate bending moment and shear force. In step 4, we will do the computation of the ultimate bending moment and ultimate shear force 
due to design load. We will also calculate the limiting ultimate moment of resistance of the initially assumed cross section of the beam. Let us compute the ultimate bending moment first. The maximum bending moment for the cantilever beam is WL square by 2 at support. By putting the values of design load and span, we get MU is equals to 110 kN meter. Next, compute the ultimate shear force which is equal to W into L. We get VU that is ultimate shear force equal to 88 kN. Finally, to check the adequacy of the assumed cross-sectional size of the beam, compute the ultimate limiting moment of resistance. Based on the clause 38.1 and Annex G of IS456, for FE415 grade steel, the moment of resistance is equals to 0.138 FCK BD square. By putting all these values, we get the moment of resistance equal to 139 0.18 kilonewton meter which is more than the acting bending moment of 110 kilonewton meter. Hence, the initially assumed sectional dimension of the beam are adequate and safe and the section is under reinforced. After knowing the adequacy of the cross sectional size of the beam, let us compute reinforcement on the tension side of the beam in step number 5. The area of a steel required for the design bending moment can be calculated by referring the formula given in clause G 1.1 B Annex G of IS 456-2000. This formula results in quadratic equation. So you need to solve the quadratic equation to get the value of AST. Otherwise, you can also use the simplified equation number 2 to calculate area of a steel. Let us use equation number 2 to compute the required area of a steel. By putting all the required values in the equation, the area of a steel required on the tension side is equal to 871 mm square. Now, let us check the minimum area of a steel required as per IS code. Using the equation given in clause 26.5.1.1a, of IS456, the minimum area of a steel required is 252 mm square, which is less than the required area of a steel that is 871 mm square calculated earlier. Hence, required area of a steel on the tension side is equal to 871 mm square. Let us fix the number of bars to be provided as tension reinforcement. Select the bar diameter as 20 mm. The cross sectional area of this bar is 314 mm square. Now compute the number of bars by dividing the required area of a steel by cross sectional area of a each bar. So provide three number of 20 mm dia bars at the top which is tension side. Thus the total area of the steel provided is equal to 942 mm square. Now, let us get the reinforcement at bottom side of the beam. As per SP34, 1984, figure 8.17a for the cantilever beam projecting from a column, the minimum area of a steel at bottom should be 0.25 times AST, where AST is the area of a steel calculated for the maximum bending moment at the support. Hence, here the minimum steel at bottom is equal to 218 mm square. So, provide two number of 12 mm dia bars at the bottom. In step 6, check the feasibility of the beam section and reinforcement for the shear stress. The nominal shear stress in the beam due to shear force is obtained by using the equation given in clause 40.1 of IS456. Putting the values of shear force, width and effective depth of the beam, 
we get shear stress equal to 0.715 newton per mm square table 20 of is456 gives the maximum allowable shear stress value tau c max for the different concrete grades so here for m20 grade of concrete tau c max is 2.8 newton per mm square as per clause 40.2.3 of IS456 under any circumstances, even with shear reinforcement, the nominal shear stress tau V should not be more than tau C max. Now, let us compare the shear stress with the design shear strength of the beam. We can get this design shear strength based on the percentage area of a steel provided and the grade of concrete from table 19 of IS456. So, let us calculate the percentage area of a steel provided. By providing the values of the area of a steel provided, width and depth of the beam, we get the percentage of steel PT as 0.765%. In table 19, the percentage value of a PT is lying between 0.75 and 1. Hence, the value of tau C is also between corresponding values 0.56 and 0.62 for M20 grade of concrete. Here, we can calculate the tau C by using linear interpolation formula. Let us mark the values of x1, x2, y1, y2, x and y. By putting all these values in the interpolation formula, we get y equals to 0.564 which is the value of tau c. Here tau v is more than tau c which means acting shear stress is more than shear strength of the beam section. Therefore, as per clause 40.4 of IS456, when tau V is more than tau C given in table 19, shear reinforcement shall be provided. As per the clause 26.5.1.6, the shear reinforcement shall be provided to carry a shear equal to VU minus tau C into B into D. After putting the values of VU, tau C, B and D, we get the balance shear force for which shear reinforcement is to be designed, which is equal to 18.628 kN. Let us use two legged 8 mm diameter vertical stirrups. The spacing of the stirrups can be calculated by referring equation given in clause 26.5.1.6 for the vertical stirrups. Rearrange this equation to get the stirrup of spacing. In the equation, the value of ASV, which is the total cross-sectional area of a stirrup legs effective in shear will be calculated by multiplying number of legs with the cross-sectional area of the stirrup bar. After providing all the values in an equation and solving, we get stirrup spacing SV equal to 798 mm. As per clause 26.5.1.5, the maximum spacing of the stirrup shall not exceed 0.75 times the effective depth of the beam. Also, the stirrup spacing should not be more than 300 mm in any case. So, let us calculate the second value of the stirrup spacing equal to 0.75 times effective depth, which is equal to 307 mm. And the third value of the stirrup spacing is equal to 300 mm. Now, maximum stirrup spacing is equal to the minimum value of the first, second and third value of the spacing. This is equal to 300 mm. Hence, provide the spacing of the vertical stirrups as 300 mm. Finally, let us summarize the design and the reinforcement detailing. 
A rectangular cantilever beam is designed with M20 grade of concrete and FE415 steel. The width of beam is 300 mm while the depth is 450 mm. Three number of 20 mm diameter bars are provided as main reinforcement at top, while two number of 12 mm dia bars are provided as anchor bars at bottom. Two legged 8 mm dia vertical stirrups are provided at a spacing 300 mm center to center of FE415 steel. If you like this video, then share your thoughts in comment section. Subscribe this channel and press the bell icon to get the notification of such interesting videos for visual and simplified learning of various civil engineering topics.